Getting in better shape is going to improve every area of your life. So today I'm going to walk you through the seven things that you need to do to go from this to this and get in better shape than 99% of people. This is the blueprint that I use to transform my life and it's worked for hundreds of my clients too, just like the ones you're seeing on the screen. The first thing that separates the top 1% from everybody else is that they have a plan. They know what they want, why they want it, and how they're gonna get it. Now, in this case, we already know the what to get in better shape than 99% of people. And we're gonna cover the how in this video, but you need to come up with the why because that's different for everybody. Your why becomes your anchor. It enables you to visualize your goals and the more you do that the closer you get to them because your why keeps you focused motivated and driven the goals that the top one percent of people have are their driver and their plan to achieve those goals is their vehicle. And when you have both of those a vehicle and a driver staying consistent and being disciplined becomes easy. And it's important to say that their goals and their plans shift and evolve over time as they reach new levels. They essentially treat life like a video game, always looking to level up. So before you go any further, you need to be very clear on why you want to do this. Because relying on motivation and willpower is not going to be enough. Because you need to realize that the top 1% of people, they don't know anything that you don't. There are no secrets. The biggest difference is up here. They see themselves as winners. And the only difference between winners and losers is that the winners do it even when they don't feel like it. They don't allow emotions to run their life and they're not sitting around waiting for motivation. They recognize that you act your way into positive thinking not the other way around. They've mapped out their route to success in their mind and they're driven by logic, which takes me nicely on to the second step. The top 1% of people are obsessed with data. They recognize that what you can measure, you can manage and they measure everything. They know how many calories they're eating. They know how much protein they're having. They know how much sleep they're getting. They know how much weight they're lifting in the gym. They know how many steps they're doing. They know how much water they're drinking. The list goes on and on. They use this data to reflect, to look back and see what went well, but equally what went badly. And then they adjust and tweak accordingly. They override any emotion and how they're feeling because they're driven by logic. Because your emotions, my emotions, they mislead us. And if you're living your life by how everything feels, you're not gonna get very far. So. Weigh yourself every day. Is it going in the right direction over time? Track your damn calories. So many people make a fuss about this. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, guess what? Anything of value is hard. That's why it's valuable. The crazy thing is that most people are put off because they think it's a life sentence. But if you consistently track your food, what you're actually putting in your mouth for just eight short weeks, which is 64 days. And by the way, we live 4,000 weeks. So we're talking about less than 0.2% of your life. You'll never have to do it again because you'll start to see food like Neo sees the matrix. It's short-term pain for a very, very, well, lifelong gain. And if you want my top tip, Program your food into an app like MyFitnessPal, which is the one most of my clients use the night before. Because then you're setting a plan. You're setting an expectation on yourself of what you need to do. And if you do that, you're far more likely to actually do it. If you have an iPhone, the health app is already tracking your steps. If you don't have an iPhone, well, you've got bigger problems, but just download a free pedometer app in the Google Play Store or whatever it's called. Remember what I said earlier, the top 1% are treating this, they're treating life like a video game. They're always trying to beat their high score and they're always trying to keep their streak going. But before you worry about winning this game, you need to be playing the game. And to be playing the game, you need to be tracking your data. So that's step number two. Get obsessed with data. Your emotion and make decisions based on logic. The third thing that you need to do if you want to get in better shape than 99% of people is to move more and live a more active life. But that doesn't mean you need to work out two hours a day, seven days a week. The most underrated exercise isn't even an exercise, but it's how you're going to consistently burn the most calories and keep your mental health in check. And that's walking. The average American and Brit does just three and a half thousand steps a day, but we're not trying to be average. We're looking for ways to be average. If you're walking at a brisk pace, you'll do about a thousand steps every eight minutes. That means if you walk for an hour a day or 64 minutes, if you want to be really precise, you'll do 8,000 steps. Not only is that more than double the average, it's going to help you burn an additional three to 400 calories every day. And if you do it at a brisk pace, you're going to be activating your zone two cardio, which is great for your heart health, and your circulation. Probably my favorite thing about walking though is that it activates your parasympathetic nervous system. Have you ever wondered why you feel less stressed and even more creative when you get outside and go for a walk? That's your parasympathetic nervous system kicking in. Your parasympathetic nervous system is the part of your nervous system that helps you to rest, relax, and recover. Changing your environment, getting outside, fresh air, heck, maybe even a little bit of sunlight, 
You don't see the effect that it has on the outside, but trust me, it is doing wonders for you on the inside. Use it as an opportunity to listen to an audiobook or a podcast, stick a playlist on, own a friend, or switch all your Zoom meetings to walking meetings. Because listen, it's been four years. No one cares about Zoom anymore. No one wants to sit on a Zoom call in front of their laptop, sitting up like this, talking about the weather and using buzzwords like synergies for eight hours a day. And here's the thing, right? Not all of your steps have to be purposeful because you're gonna do about two to 4,000 a day just moving around the house, commuting to work, playing with your kids, having sex with your partner. So all you need to consciously think about is doing 6,000 steps a day, which at that brisk pace is about 45 minutes. Okay, now we've got you moving and building some momentum. The next natural step is to get you in the gym and lifting some weights. Because if you wanna get in better shape than 99% of people, you're gonna need to build some lean muscle. And the only way to do that is resistance training. But like I said earlier, I think the biggest misconception about the gym and probably the biggest thing that holds so many people back from even starting in the first place is the thought that they have to go seven days a week for two hours a day. But nothing could be further from the truth. You can get in better shape than 99% of people by doing three 45 minute full body workouts if you structure them in the right way. First things first, we want your workouts to be based around compound movements. These are the exercises that use the biggest muscles in your body. Not only is that gonna have the biggest effect on your physique from an aesthetic point of view, but it's also gonna help you to burn the most calories because the bigger the muscle, the bigger the contraction and the bigger the contraction, the harder that your body has to work. I'll let you Google a full list of compound movements, but just to give you an idea, I'm talking about bench press, squat, deadlift, push-ups, lunges, pull-ups, hip thrusts, bent over rows, anything like that. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is maximize the efficiency of your workout. So because the chances are, if you're the type of person who's watching a video like this and wants to get in better shape than 99% of people, you're probably already pretty busy and you can increase the efficiency of your workouts in three ways. Firstly, when you're in the gym, put your phone away. The number of people, mostly guys, I have to say, who sit on their phone in between sets is ridiculous. In fact, true and funny story, last week I was in the gym waiting for a guy to get off a piece of equipment, a machine that I wanted to use. So I went off and I did three other exercises. I did 12 sets in total. And in the time that I did 12 sets, he did just three. All because he was just sat scrolling on his phone. Secondly, don't fall for the trap that most fitness YouTubers will tell you. Now, I'm not sure if they're telling you this because they're genuinely stupid or because they just want you to buy their program. But either way, the less variety, I would say the better. You don't need to be doing 12 exercises every workout. If you're going to take the full body approach that I mentioned earlier, pick three lower body exercises and three upper body exercises. The less exercises that you do, the less time that you spend racking and unracking weights and waiting for equipment to become available. So pick your six exercises and rather than doing three sets of 10 like everybody says to do, do four or five sets of 15 to 20 reps. That way you're gonna get a ton more volume done in a lot less time. And the third thing that you can do to make your workouts more efficient is to lighten the weight and shorten the rest periods. If you add those three elements to your workhouse, you're gonna make dramatic progress. And of course, if you have more time, if you can go to the gym four or even five times a week, then great. If you're aiming to go four days, I'd recommend you split your week into two upper body sessions and two lower body sessions. So it might be Monday you do upper body, Tuesday you do lower body, Wednesday you rest, and then you repeat it on Thursday, Friday, and rest again over the weekends. If you're gonna aim to do five workouts in a week, I would recommend you do a push, legs, pull on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, rest on Thursday, then do a lower body on Friday, and an upper body on Saturday, and then rest again on Sunday so that you are fresh and ready to go the next week. All right, we're just over halfway through, so let's do a quick recap. Number one, make a plan and figure out your why. Number two, get obsessed with your data. Number three, walk 8,000 steps a day. Number four, get in the gym and lift weights at least three times a week. For number five, we need to focus on your recovery, specifically your sleep. Not just for your physical health, but also for your mental health. Sleep is one of the highest leverage activities because there are so many amazing benefits downstream of it. Energy, clarity, focus, strength, happiness, but above all, drum bass. I'm sure you know what I mean here. Everything just feels so much easier when you've had a few good nights sleep. When it comes to your sleep, I'd encourage you to look at it this way. The next day 
really starts the night before because all of those things that I just mentioned, energy, drive, focus, clarity, etc., etc., they're all determined by the decisions that you make the night before. To improve your sleep, we need to consider three things. How long you're sleeping, how well you're sleeping, and how regularly you sleep. The regularity is the easiest, so let's box that off quickly. The science shows that if you go to bed and wake up at roughly the same time every day, give or take 30 minutes to an hour, you're going to feel better and you're going to sleep better. So do that. To improve the quality of your sleep, we need to optimize your sleep environment. So you want your bedroom as cold, dark, ventilated, and quiet as possible. So I want you to get on Amazon and add these three things to your shopping cart. Blackout blinds or curtains, a fan, and some earplugs. And for ventilation, as long as it's safe for you to do so, I'd recommend that you sleep with your bedroom door open. If you can't do that for whatever reason, and you don't live in a big city, then open your window. Lastly, to make sure that you're getting at least seven hours of sleep a night, we wanna focus on your wind down routine. First thing to do here is to set a bedtime alarm, an alarm that tells you when it's time to start winding down. Work backwards from the time that you wanna wake up. So let's say you wanna wake up at 7 a.m. Ideally, you're gonna to wanna to be asleep, not in bed, asleep, by about 11 p.m. If that's the case, I would say your bedtime alarm for no later than 10 p.m. I'd also recommend you follow the three, two, one rule, where you stop eating three hours before bed, you stop drinking two hours before bed, and you get off all the screens, so laptops, phones, TVs, an hour before bed. To get into a deep sleep, our heart rate has to be at a resting level. Eating is a metabolic process, and that means it raises your heart rate. It requires time and effort for your body to digest your food, so give it that time. Drinking obviously fills your bladder, so if you cut it out two hours before bed, you're far less likely to wake up in the night and have your sleep disturbed. And the blue light from screens affects your body's ability to produce melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. That's number five. For number six, we need to switch focus and talk about your nutrition and your diet. If you want to get in better shape than 99% of people, you're going to have to get rid of that excess body fat. So we need to start by putting you in a calorie deficit where you're burning more calories than you're eating and drinking. Doing that forces your body to use the stored fat as fuel. But for you to create a calorie deficit, the first thing we need to do is figure out what your maintenance calorie number is. Your maintenance calorie number is pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. It's the number of calories that you want to be eating and drinking if you just want it to stay the same. The simplest way to calculate your maintenance calories is to take your body weight in pounds, not in kilos, in pounds, common mistake that most people make, and multiply that number by 14. Now that won't give you a precise number, but it's a quick and easy solution that's going to give you an answer in the next 10 seconds. But if you want a more precise number to make sure that you're eating the right amount, you can click the first link in the description of this video, and some basic information about yourself, and I'll send you free personalized calorie and protein targets so that you can lose fat faster. Once we know your maintenance number, we can create your calorie deficit. Now at this stage, what most personal trainers and nutritionists will advise is that you take 500 calories away from your maintenance number and eat that many every day. So let's say you did the sums and your maintenance calories came out at 2,500. They'd recommend you eat 2,000 each day. And the reason they all say that is because if you maintain a 500 calorie deficit for seven days for a week, you're going to lose one pound of fat. That's because there's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat and 500 times by seven is 3,500. Now, while I do think losing a pound of fat a week is very sustainable, it's not the approach I recommend my clients take. And that's because I think it's flawed in two ways. Firstly, it doesn't give you any room for failure. There is no flexibility. It assumes you act and live like a robot. It assumes that every day will be the same, but you and I both know that life is not like that. And the second flaw that I can see in that approach is it encourages you to be pretty restrictive with your food. Eating 500 calories less every single day is like cutting out a full meal. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to be fueled. I want you to be energized. So this is what I suggest my clients do instead. Firstly, we're going to take your calorie deficit number. So in the example that I gave you earlier, that would be 2000 every day. But this time we're going to multiply it by seven. Now you've got a weekly calorie allowance, a budget if you like. You can now decide how and when you spend your calories on a bigger time horizon. It's going to give you a lot more freedom, a lot more flexibility, and it's going to put you in control. Now you can plan ahead, which is always a good thing to do. You can have low calorie days, and high calorie days. It takes the pressure off. Now you don't have to be perfect every single day. And it means that when you mess up, because you will mess up, because you are a human, not a robot, it doesn't mean that you need to throw in the towel on a Wednesday and say, diet starts Monday. That approach is exactly what keeps people out of the top 1%. And remember, now you're living a more active lifestyle. You're going to burn an additional three to 400 calories a day just from walking those 8,000 steps. That means you only need to create half of your deficit from food. 
So rather than worrying about cutting out a whole meal, 500 calories a day, you just need to reduce your calories by 250. And 250 calories is nothing. It's a small snack or a can of soda. But aside from knowing how much you need to be eating, one of the best things that I've done for my nutrition in the last five years is start to base it on principles. Number one is that I'm always making sure it's nice and balanced. I'm getting plenty of protein, carbs, and fat in my diet because all three of the macronutrients play an important role in your health. Number two is that I'm making sure my diet is omnivorous. I'm getting my protein from lean meats, fish, dairy, and eggs, and I'm getting my fiber and carbs from fruit, vegetable, and whole grains. And then the third principle complements that. I'm eating mostly whole food, so it's nutrient dense, and I'm really limiting the amount of processed food and junk. But at the same time, principles four and five are equally important. Principle four is that I like to make sure that my diet is quick and simple. I have the same breakfast every single day and I like to rotate five meals throughout the week for lunches and dinners. So I can make all my meals from scratch in 20 minutes or less. And then the last principle is probably the most important and that is that I like to make sure that my diet is enjoyable because if it's enjoyable, it never feels like I'm actually on a diet. And the way that I do that is by sprinkling in some healthy snacks and treats every day. Now treats and healthy snacks are going to be different for absolutely everybody. It's very much what you like. But for me at the moment anyway, it's Fanta Lemon Zero Sugar and dark chocolate after my lunches and dinners. I genuinely enjoy everything that I eat and your goal with your diet should be the same. But listen, it's going to take you some time to construct the perfect diet for you. But it's a worthwhile exercise because once you find what works, it's going to feel effortless. I've done a whole other video on my diet where I break it down in full. So I'll make sure that I link that one at the end of this video. Last but certainly not least, number seven is to hire a coach. Coaches are like cheat codes because instead of paying with time, you're paying with money. Now on the face of it, that might not sound like a great deal, but think about it. Time is far more valuable than money ever will be. So as long as you pick the right coach, it's always a good investment. It's kind of morbid, but I know that 95% of you watching this video will click off it and do absolutely nothing. Or at best, you'll cherry pick the one thing you like the sound of the most and ignore the other six. And even then, you'll probably only do that one thing for a week. Hiring a coach gets you from point A to point B with accountability, motivation, and support. And these are all so important because they help you with the most crucial part of this whole process, consistency. So if you're serious about getting into better shape than 99% of people, I strongly advise you to look into hiring a coach because I guarantee if you hire the right coach, it's going to be the easiest and the fastest way for you to get what you want. If you like this video and you want to find out more about my coaching program, you can click the second link in the description and we can have a chat to see if you'd be a good fit for it. If not, no worries. Good luck. See you soon.